guys hear me okay? Awesome, cool. Uh, but before we get started, I want to say thank you guys for joining me and a big thank you to the organizers for inviting me to be here. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about um, the hacking community, a community that's changed a lot of lives, including mine. Um, but before we get started, I want to kind of start with saying that uh, I don't want to credit the bug bounty and hacking community for the amazing things uh, that are included in this presentation. I just want to, I want to say that these people have done a lot of hard work on their own. And I think that community, uh, the bug bounty community has got an impact on it. And bear with me if I repeat myself, I'm a little bit jet lagged. So it might be a little bit hard for me to get these words out, but I'm going to try my best. Um, well, um, let's talk about it. First of all, I'm Ben Sadegapur. Uh, most people online knows, know me as Nahamsek. I am a bug bounty hunter. I'll tell you what bug bounties are in just a little bit. I create content. I hack. I've hacked into companies like Lyft, uh, Uber, um, Airbnb, Snapchat, Facebook, Google, you name it. I've gone into their infrastructure. I've done something through their bug bounty program. And currently, I work as the VP of Community at, and Research at a uh, startup called Hadrian. We do attack surface management and red team automation. So we pretty much automatically hack companies, uh, building machine learning and some AI. But before I got into all this, um, before I got into the bug bounty scene and I got into hacking as a formal job, I was a almost a college dropout. So I went to a university. Uh, typically, you're supposed to graduate in four years. Uh, it took me about seven to graduate, unfortunately. Uh, as you can see, I almost dropped out uh, a number of times. Um, I couldn't answer the question, why am I here? I went to school. I didn't know what I wanted to do with school. Um, they were teaching us a lot of Java. I don't know why. Um, people still use Java to this day. Uh, no offense if you use Java. It's just not something that I wanted to do. Um, we had a school, for, our school had a, a requirement for graduation that I had to design a mobile game in Java in order to graduate. And I couldn't pass the class because I freaking hated Java. Uh, and I wanted to go into cybersecurity, um, but that, those were the rules. So I didn't really like school. Uh, I wasn't really a big fan of the whole formal education. I like to read things out on my own and I like to learn things on my own. Um, but I eventually uh, got to graduate. So I went on probation. If you're not familiar with probation is when the school comes to you and says, hey, get it together or we're gonna kick you out. Uh, unfortunately, they came to me a few times and it was time to get it together. Well, eventually I learned um, that YouTube exists. <laughs> a lot of your coursework is on YouTube. Uh, if you don't, you know, for me, calculus was a c class that I was, I enjoyed math, but I just didn't enjoy going to class. So I used uh, YouTube to learn calculus one, two, and three. So there were three classes. Uh, I failed calculus the first two times because I kept missing the test and the quizzes that the school would put together. Uh, eventually, I went on YouTube and I learned how to do calculus. And so I went up to the teacher, I said, hey, can you tell me what days are the quizzes so I can just show up for the quiz? I promise you I will pass. You can you know, ask me questions whenever you want. I'm just learning things on my own. I don't have time to come to your class. I don't understand how you teach. And that teacher worked with me, so I ended up learning a lot of things on YouTube and ended up graduating. And then I learned about this thing called a bug bounty. Uh, anybody here familiar with bug bounty by a show of hands? Okay, wow, okay, more than I expected. Uh, anybody here run a bug bounty program? Okay, anybody here participate in a bug bounty program? Well, you just, you all know what a bug bounty program is. Okay, cool. Uh, well, if you don't know what a bug bounty program is, it is a legit business. Uh, it's where individuals like myself uh, go to a company. I think Facebook and Google were the first ones to start it. Uh, you go to these companies, you find vulnerabilities in their servers and their applications. Um, it could be devices, it could be, um, IoT devices, whatever they have, you find vulnerabilities and they pay you. So you could get paid anywhere. I think nowadays, back when I started, it was like $100 to I think 20,000 was the most you could get. I know a few hackers who have made $100,000 per vulnerability just this month or this, this week. I have a few friends that have made that, $100,000. Uh, a lot of it in the crypto scene, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever you want to call it. But it is a legit business. Um, $100 to $100,000 within a few hours of work. And it really, really changed everything, uh, including for myself. Uh, when I learned about bug bounties, I finally was like, okay, maybe it is time to graduate. That's when I started doing more YouTube stuff, to learn to graduate. Uh, it just changed 
the, the fact that I just wanted to not go to school to, okay, let's just get this degree, get out of school, and go on with my life. At the time, I was doing an internship for one of the bug bounty platforms. They really wanted me to be out of school so I can go start working for them. So it was time to get it together and uh, finish it off. So it just really changed everything. And I'll talk about more other changes uh, towards the end. But it didn't just change my life. Uh, I'm one of the thousands of hackers that are out there hacking on bug bounty programs. In fact, it changed a lot of lives for them as well. Uh, so this is a number of hackers that I've either worked with, uh, you're going to hear from during this presentation. Um, and they're all in the leaderboard for HackerOne at some point. They were one of the top 100 hackers. And this is not all of them. These are just the ones that I just picked their avatars and threw them in there. And a lot of these faces may come back in the presentation. So let's talk about them. Where I learned that there are different profiles that come and do bug bounties. Uh, outside of people that manage bug bounties, outside the platforms that create bug bounty platforms to make sure you can work with researchers. The researchers, the researchers themselves have different profiles. Uh, this could be from being a learner to being a moonlighter uh, or someone that wants to become, uh, you know, get enough knowledge to get a job. And it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter what language you speak. Nobody is going to care what your background is like. And there's room for everybody in this community. First of all, it's online, so you're anonymous. But the biggest thing is <clears throat> you can join. You don't have to have a degree, you don't have to upload your resume, you don't have to give them your first name or last name, unless you're getting paid for tax purposes and you have to do that for taxes. But other than that, online you don't have to describe who you are. And there is room for everybody. So throughout this presentation, for the next uh, 40 minutes, kick back and I'm going to tell you stories from some of my favorite hackers that I've had the pleasure to either work with, uh, they're my friends, colleagues, or just people that in passing I've gone to know in the past uh, eight to nine years. So the first profile is the full-timer. This is the person that wants to find vulnerabilities. They just look for vulns and they get paid. Uh, the objective is to pay the bills. Uh, or in some cases, I know hackers who have made over a million dollars in bug bounties, uh, some who have made maybe two or three million dollars, but the objective is make money, pay your bills, not have a daytime job, and there are, I want to say, 14 of them that I know of that have made over a million dollars, uh, some in the past eight years, some within the last two to three years. The first one is one of my favorite uh, people in the world, Doggy G. He is a formal black hat. He has hacked into... Uh, government and some corporations that now pay him to hack into their <laughs> websites. Um, very awkward if you think about it. You know, they sent him to jail and he came out and now he's hacking their companies with bug bounties and making money from it. Uh, he's what they call a HackerOne elite. Uh, HackerOne is a bug bounty platform. I actually worked for Hacker HackerOne for the last seven years. I just recently left. I was head of hacker education there so to teach people how to hack. So HackerOne calls these hackers elite. Uh, elite means that they either were a big part of the community they did great research. Something about them made him stand out from the crowd and the security researchers that are in that group. Uh, he was one of the first three, I want to say, to cross a million dollars in bug bounties. As I mentioned, he was a former black hat. Uh, he served time in prison for hacking. Uh, he was a chef for a while because he couldn't be on a computer um, for a few years. So he went and became a chef. That's the only thing he could do in uh, today's age when everything is ran by technology. He turned his life around, um, I want to say seven years ago, it just popped up out of nowhere, came to DEF CON, one of the live, uh, one of the biggest hacking conferences in the world, and uh, he just said, I want to make money doing bug bounties, and he did everything he could. And uh, he's hacked full time for five years, and eventually he was hired by a company called Braze, I think he runs their uh, web app security. Um, so he's still hacking full time, has gotten a job, but during that time, in the first five, six years, he did nothing but this full time to pay his bills. And he's a car enthusiast, so if you look him up, he has a lot of, uh, lot, a lot of nice looking cars. Uh, and you can see all the companies that he's hacked on. Uh, if you look up here, you can see Yahoo, uh, or they were known as Verizon Media for a while. Uh, he's hacked the US Department of Defense, that includes the Army, the Air Force, uh, the Pentagon for the United States. Uh, some of the companies that you can see, SEMrush, uh, GM, Adobe, Zomato, DuckDuckGo. And just keep in mind, the pictures that I show on the right-hand side are the public data that I can find on HackerOne. There are private companies that exist that I can't talk about. So just look at your phone, 
some of these top technology companies that you have on your their apps on your phones are also included in these, but unfortunately, uh, due to privacy reasons, we can't mention who they are. Uh, there is mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Uh, the pronunciation for this name is to be determined. Uh, he had a background in uh, financial tech. He did a lot of work in IT and data science. He built CRMs. And eventually, he was doing research on what next business should I get into without any cybersecurity background. And he got into bug bounties because he knew how to process data. And he also understood GDPR very well. And uh, he knew also how to make money online. Uh, so he became one of the f uh, second batch of $1 million hackers. He actually made his first million on HackerOne in about two years, just because he was very good at building things and he understood data, how to scrape data from the internet, what is supposed to be private, what is supposed to not be private. And he made his first million uh, very, very quickly. And you can see that uh, in, a, you know, in the last two years alone, he found 364 uh, vulnerabilities that were valid and sent them to Yahoo, uh, which is known as Verizon Media, or it used to be Verizon Media. And you can see he's also hacked on the US Department of Defense, PayPal, AT&T, and a couple other ones. But the biggest one is Yahoo. And keep in mind that Yahoo's been around for 30 years now. Their bug bounty program has been around for 10 years. And for someone to come in on their sixth or seventh year and still be able to find this many number of vulnerabilities, it's a big thing. So this company has had a bug bounty program for six years. This guy comes around and he finds 300 plus vulnerabilities within a few years of being involved. Uh, there's ZLZ. He is uh, a very, very young hacker. Uh, he also was uh, in school. I think he was in high school that time I met him. Uh, he went to college, dropped out because to him it was, what's the point if I'm already doing more on my own, learning hacking and security, already offering jobs and that kind of stuff. Why would I want to? Uh, go to school. So he started doing freelance web work in high school. He spent a lot of time playing video games and also hacking them. Uh, lots and lots of video games he's hacked, to, hacked into. Uh, he did bug bounties on and off for five years. He was uh, on, in the news for hacking Tesla. So he found a way, he actually chipped his windshield of his Tesla. And when he was doing a request to get it fixed, he found a way to hack into Apple um, and made $10,000 just getting his windshield fixed. And he was in the news for it not too long ago. Uh, he started his own company, uh, Palisade, and uh, now he's retired from that and works for Yuga Labs. If you're not familiar with Yuga Labs, uh, think of imaginary JPEGs on the internet of monkeys that are being sold for millions of dollars. Uh, he works for them. They're the people that uh, create them. Uh, he was also in the news about two years ago, three years ago. Um, me, uh, him, and a few other hackers uh, that were also included in this, we actually hacked Apple for uh, three months. Um, and we were able to find a number of different vulnerabilities that made it to the news. And I think uh, they paid us about $500,000 in bug bounties. And Sam was the person that led that entire thing. It was his idea to just bring a group of people together to, fucking, uh, to find vulnerabilities in Apple and report it to them. And that was three months of work, and it got into a lot of news. The next profile is the, the academic. Their whole objective is to learn. They want to learn about cybersecurity. Either they are in school for cybersecurity, or uh, they are just somebody who wants to get the certificate, maybe. They want to get their OSCP, OSW, whatever the certification is. And uh, they don't really, the objective isn't to earn money. That's a secondary objective. The money is nice, but the main objective is to learn. So they genuinely are interested in cybersecurity itself. Everything else is a secondary, primary. It's not the primary. They're going to get to that eventually. And eventually what happens is they graduate from this path, and they move on to whatever it is next. Either they go up the ladder by going to getting their master's, their PhD, or they get a job, they get to the goal they want to, and then they stop doing bug bounties. There we go. Uh, so the first one is Jack Cable. Uh, he is, I think, right now at uh, Harvard, unless he graduated last year. And uh, he was also, when we found him, uh, th when I found him through the bug bounty community, he was, I want to say, 16 or 17. He started by hacking the Department of Defense at first. You can see on the back there's a lot of other companies like Uber, Airbnb, Yahoo, Instacart, Coinbase, uh, TikTok, uh, you name it, a bunch of other government sites. But he was very interested in the Army and the U.S. Department of Defense Pentagon programs. And eventually, 
what ended up happening is uh, once he got into Stanford and he got his resume together, uh, the people behind election security reached out to him and he was actually working for the company that was in charge of the United States election. Uh, so he got to work with the government closely. I think right before that, he was actually hired as an intern by DHS. If I'm not mistaken, he actually worked for them and then he made his way up. I don't know what he does right now anymore, unfortunately, but his whole career, his whole thing was to learn about cybersecurity at a very young age by doing bug bounties. Uh, there's DC, this is uh, another hacker. Uh, he is a CTF player. If you're not familiar with CTFs, uh, it's called like, it's a capture the flag. What that means is the objective is like a puzzle. It's an objective. You have to solve it. Once you solve it, they give you a flag. You put it into the system. It gives you a reward, whether it's points, monetary, whatever it is. He is currently working at GitLab. Uh, I think he's an application engineer for GitLab. And what he told me was that when he wanted to apply for a security role, he leveraged his bug bounty experience to demonstrate that he knows what he's talking about. So it wasn't so much to become a hacker, but he had done enough of this work as a security engineer to be able to say, hey, I understand what hackers do. I'm a developer myself. I can bring the two together and help secure your infrastructure, your, uh, your program, whatever that is. So if you're familiar with GitLab, he is uh, an engineer there now. And he said, again, the interview process was a lot easier because of his experience as a hacker, because he could answer the security questions both from a security perspective and an offensive hacker's perspective. The next one is the careerist. This is to just get a job. The, I, this is almost, I want to say, the dream for a lot of the bug bounty hunters. Or at least the newer ones. They're all coming to bug bounties. They want to find vulnerabilities and eventually get a job. Uh, so again, the main objective is to get a job. Anything else, the learning, the money, it's all secondary. Just the primary is I want to do this. I want to put on my resume. I want to score a job. And we'll take a look at that one in a little bit. Uh, but I posted this tweet a while ago and I asked, hey, I want to do a video or a talk. Uh, can you tell me what you have done uh, with bug bounties that's helped you with your career? So this one is uh, Jack Finite, uh, another hacker. He just said that he works at Facebook. He found a very good vulnerability in Facebook, which landed him a technical interview with the Facebook AppSec uh, team. And if it wasn't for that, his uh, entire career would have been different. Uh, Shubbs, we'll talk about him a little bit. Uh, he said he's traveled through the world, but he's also got his first uh, job in InfoSec uh, because of bug bounties. Same thing here. Uh, I got a pen tester job. Uh, if it wasn't for his current job, he wouldn't have uh, another. If it wasn't for bug bounties, he wouldn't have his job. Just loads of hackers saying something similar. Uh, this is a really cool case. Uh, Mail.ru, this is an engineer from them saying, hey, we invited our number one hacker from our program to come and work for us. Uh, he was number one and he accepted the offer, just networking himself through their bug bounty program. Again, more people saying it worked. Uh, they hacked the army and got invited to work for them. Uh, got their Vimeo job because they were the number one hacker on their bug bounty program. You name it, just a number of hackers who've done this uh, that have gotten jobs because of it. You all get the point, right? It's just you, you hack, you meet people that are working at these companies. Nine out of ten times, you end up knowing more about their products than they do. Um, so instead of paying you enormous amount of money to find vulnerabilities, it's cheaper to hire you uh, to work for them full time. Uh, so here are some of my favorite ones. Uh, Peter Jaworski, uh, he is a, another great hacker. Uh, him and I hacked on Airbnb a lot, um, competing against each other. But uh, HackerOne does these things called life hacking events. They fly out a number of hackers to a remote location. I think they just did one last month in Barcelona. They invited 60 hackers to that. They invite all the hackers. They put them in a beautiful hotel. They bring a big customer like PayPal. Uh, Airbnb was one of them. Um, and they just say, hey, hack on these products, find vulnerabilities, get paid. Pete showed up to one of the first ones four or five years ago uh, in San Francisco, H1415. Shopify was uh, the customer for that day. And he ended up finding something critical on their program. The HR team interviewed him, interviewed him on the spot at the event. And then within a few months, he was hired working at Shopify. And then a few years later, he left. Now he works at Stripe. Uh, and you can see he is number three on the Airbnb program uh, as of not too long ago. And you can see other programs he's hacked on, uh, Zendesk, GitHub, Twitter, uh, Shopify, Starbucks, uh, and GitLab. But uh, very cool to see someone go into an event randomly, not expecting anything, getting an HR interview on the spot, and then being hired by Shopify right away and kind of built the entire career for him. He's also one of my Canadian uh, favorite Canadian hackers. Um, by default, he's very nice being Canadian. 
Um, he also likes ketchup chips. I don't know if you've had them. They're really good. Uh, but he's a great dude. Uh, he's got a very cool story. We'll talk about him in a little bit again. There's a little bit more to his story that I'm going to mention in a bit. Uh, Techno Geek, uh, his first name is Joel. He is also another great hacker. I promise we'll almost know what the hacker story is. There's more to this than just uh, the hackers. But uh, he also came to another life hacking event. Uh, he hacked on Uber. He found an extremely bizarre vulnerability on their mobile app. Uh, he was going to school in New York, dropped out of school, took the job with Uber after they, he found that vulnerability. Same thing. They interviewed him right on the spot at the event. He was hired a few weeks later. Uh, he quit that job uh, about a year or two ago. He's an engineer at Tinder now. But he just pretty much traded school um, for a job. Again, it wasn't, none of us have anything against school. It's just, it's just easier to not go to school when you already have all these job offers, when you already have an opportunity. People go to school to get these job opportunities, but it's just a shortcut when you already have a chance to find vulnerabilities on these websites, meet people directly at these companies, and then be hired by them. The last profile, I think, I think it's the last profile, is the Moonlighter. Uh, this is the people that want to learn, they also want to earn money. They are already doing full-time jobs. Uh, they already have some sort of a line, gig lined up. They either want to go up the ladder, but they're doing this after work, during work, even though their employers don't know, but they're doing some sort of a moonlighting on the side to make money. Uh, this is Zayat. Uh, he's one of my really, really good friends. He is a... I can't even describe the, the, the way this guy's <laughs> brain works. Uh, he's also another hacker one elite. Uh, he is a red teamer. He loves solving puzzles. He's actually, uh, if you're familiar with DEF CON, DEF CON gives out these black badges, their Uber badges, that are very hard to get. That means you have to solve all the challenges, be one of the number one teams around the world to get him. He's done him two years in a row. Uh, he was uh, formerly employed at a gaming company. Uh, if you play video games, you definitely know who he worked for. And now he also works at Yuga Labs, and you can see his resume of hacking just on this platform is Airbnb, Yahoo again, Dropbox, Rockstar Games, PlayStation, you name it, he's hacked them. And uh, this image is actually at one of the live hacking events by HackerOne. Uh, this is actually a security staff uh, for Department of Defense. And uh, they were shaking his hand saying thank you because he found something incredibly ugly in the Department of Defense's infrastructure that could have been very bad. Um, and it's just cool to see somebody that's he wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for bug binary. Someone who has never worked with the government, didn't plan on working with the government, meeting somebody um, high up there and you know, getting a thank you from them in person and getting paid. He's also honestly has been a good friend and a mentor to me. We're about the same age, but I've learned a lot from him and hopefully he's learned a lot from me, but he's been a great connection uh, as someone that I've worked with in the past 10 years. Uh, but it's not just hacking. I've talked about people that have made money from hacking, from bug binary specifically. Uh, there are other people. There are content creators. Uh, this is Stoke. Um, anyone familiar with Stoke here? Yeah, he's very uh, well, well known for hacking. Uh, he called himself a hack financer for a while. Uh, he hacked part time. He mostly went to the Hacker One events. Uh, he creates content for bug bounty hunters. I think there's a shift for what he makes now, um, but he came up as a content creator for bug bounties. He's also uh, presented at a bunch of conferences. And now he works for a company out in Sweden called Chusek. And he does a lot of their content, their cybersecurity focused content for them. Uh, this is Insider PhD, Katie. He is a, she is, sorry, she is a, uh, actually she teaches at a university now, but originally she was found through one of the hacking events as a mentee. She came in, uh, one of the hackers mentored her and she found her first bug. She's been mentoring other people since, the, uh, since then, paying it forward. And she's also represented at a bunch of conferences. Um, she got just quit Bug Crowd, which is another bug bounty platform. Uh, but again, she came through as a bug bounty hunter. Now she's lecturing uh, somewhere in uh, the UK for cybersecurity. Last one is Farah. She is also another bug bounty hunter. She started making content. Her focus is mostly also helping people get into InfoSec. So if you're new to InfoSecurity, you want to learn, her Instagram is a great place to start. Um, she was employed by Barcrow two years ago, and now she is a regional manager for her team. So there's, we talk about content creators, there's YouTube, there's more, there's people that have written books. Uh, remember this guy, Pete? He was one of the first people to write a book on bug bounties. Uh, it first started as an ebook. it was just a side project for him, just to putting things together. What he did was, uh, HackerOne's website allows you to disclose your findings. So if I want to disclose what I found on 
a company like Airbnb. I go into my report and say disclose. It gets disclosed on HackerOne. So he was reading all of them and he was copying them into a book. And on the next page, he was breaking down what these vulnerabilities meant. Why was it critical? Why was it valuable to find this vulnerability? What did it mean? And how were they able to exploit it? It was a really good way for people to learn. He had it accessible online to buy it. But then eventually, Northstars reached out to him and they offered him a book deal. He rewrote the entire book. Uh, made it a little bit different, but uh, if he put out this book not too long ago with no starch, you can actually order it online. It's the same concept. It's a really, really good place uh, to get started. Vicky Lee, uh, same thing, wrote another book, uh, book on Bug Bounty Bootcamp. This pretty much talks about all the vulnerabilities that are out there. Uh, she herself is an extremely talented hacker. She works as an AppSec engineer, I believe, somewhere. Uh, she is very, very good at taking very hard technical concepts and making them into a blog post. So if you want to learn about uh, web hacking, really good place to go. And uh, her book is amazing. So we go to vickylee.medium.com for her uh, blog. But the book itself is extremely good. It tells you everything you need to know about bug bounties, every vulnerability type, resources, and so on. And there's also courses and trainings. Z Shano was one of the first people that did that. Uh, also another top hacker. Uh, if you use TripAdvisor or Amazon, he was recognized by both of them from, for just hacking their websites. And uh, he is a part-time streamer, but he also created a content around what he does. So he actually sat down and made his entire methodology into a book. How did he get started? How did he pick up his targets? What did he do? Step by step, everything he has done into a book. And then later he said, you know what? Screw that. I'm just going to make a platform where people could hands-on learn from me and can report bugs. So he has created a fake website where you can hack into it. You write your reports like you would with a bug bounty program, and you report it to him, and he would criticize it and tell you what you could do to do better or how you could have hacked it and done better with it at, at itself. So his platform is called Bug Bounty Hunter. Uh, I don't know what the price is. I want to say it's about $100 or uh, $120 to sign up, but you get to learn directly from him and work with him. There are thousands of, uh, actually thousands of Udemy courses. Yeah, on Udemy, people have made bug bounty courses, including myself. Um, another way that you can find uh, Uncle Rad, uh, it's another hacker who makes content. He's got a course, so people have also gone as far as making Udemy courses. There are also startups. Uh, hackers have taken their money. Not only they have invested in other tech startups, but they've also created bug bounty startups for hackers are also by hackers. So it's either to serve the bug bounty community or it's something that the bug bounty hackers from the community have created this product. Uh, Shubbs was one of the people that I talked about earlier. Um, his story is a similar to any other hacker that I've talked about. He's a hacker one elite. Uh, he is very well known for hacking United Airlines. Uh, and United Airlines, the way that the bug bounty program is, they gave you miles. So I think he had maybe a couple of million miles from the airline to just fly wherever he wanted to. Uh, he started as a moonlighter, he had a full-time job, but he was still doing this on the side. And then he eventually said, you know what, I want to create my own company. He created an attack surface management. Uh, so what they have done is they've pretty much taken his brain, everything that he knows, and have uh, built it into a product. And a lot of the stuff that he has done was individually by him, but now they have grown and have hired other hackers to help them. And some of these bug bounty platforms are actually a customer of his. Uh, Geek Boy, same thing, another great hacker. Uh, he did bug bounties full time for a while. He worked at Hacker One for a bit to learn business. And then uh, eventually he left Hacker One to become an entrepreneur. And what he did was he created a company called Project Discovery. Uh, similar to Shubbs's company, they do something similar, but their difference is they make open source tools. So everything that they do at their company, the tools get open source. So for the community to contribute to and make it better, or actually hackers, they can take it and use it on their own. And the list of the tools that you see on the third line are some of the popular tools that are either used by corporations or hackers on a very regular basis. And again, these tools are completely free. Um, shout out to them, big kudos to them for making this happen. And this is what it looks like for their website. Uh, you can go to their website on uh, projectdiscovery.com. I uh, promise there's more, but not just <laughs> jobs and content creator and businesses. Um, the hackers have done just more than making money. They, the, the objective was always to make money to change their lives, but they've also affected other people's lives. So again, I crowdsourced this, because uh, why not? What did you do with your bug bounty money? Uh, Nafi with the charity, he started his own charity. Um, they paid for their wedding. Uh, he turned, we talked about Doggy G. Uh, he turned out his life around. Um, 
it wouldn't have been possible without Bug Bounty. Uh, someone funded their, both of their degrees. They traveled a lot, helped their parents with expenses, uh, and now they're looking to buy a flat. Uh, paid off debt, bought a house, or bought a car, uh, regular charity donations. Oh, I think I broke this. Nope, there we go. Uh, bought a, my parents' cars. They helped their parents buy a house. Uh, saving for college, lots of pizza. Uh, helped mom with mortgage, bought a car. And this one's one of my favorite stories. These two brothers actually helped their dad and mom and dad actually retire uh, in India. Um, they were both going to school, and one of them was working at an IT job on the side. And uh, one of them quits to go do it full time to see if it's worth it. And then the other one also joins them eventually. And a few years later, they were able to do this whole thing full time. But the cool thing is um, they were able to help their parents retire at a younger age and pay for all their expenses. And this is my personal favorite uh, moment is actually help with, with help a bunch of the people that I mentioned, uh, Stoke and a few other people. We were able to raise o o over $50,000 uh, for Leukemia Lymphoma Society to help beat cancer. Um, all, every money that you see up there, our goal was 30000 but we ended up almost double of that with $52,000 uh, and donated every single penny of it to the charity. Uh, but let's bring it full circle. I talked about a lot of people, but I didn't tell you guys about my story at all, but I wanted to kind of highlight those stories before to kind of mention how it affected me. Uh, besides the fact that I, you know, I hate school, we talked about that. Uh, but would you guys like to hear my story? Perfect. Uh, so my name is Naham Sek. Uh, I'm also one of the Hacker One Elites. I've hacked into Airbnb, United, uh, Snapchat, you name it, I've hacked into them. I want to say I have almost a thousand reports overall across the board in the past seven years. Uh, before I got into hacking, I understood web technology and development. I knew how to build PHP websites. Um, not so good at it really, but I learned how to do that. I used to uh, sell websites for a living. Uh, and then I spent a lot of my time in digital marketing and advertisement. Uh, I was one of the people that wanted to go to school to get a job. Uh, it turned out to be a full-time bug bounty hunter. Then I wanted to get my job, and then I got a job. I started moonlighting, and then I got into content creating and launching businesses with it. So I've done almost all of those different profiles that I mentioned uh, throughout the presentation. So my first bug bounty, actually, uh, was in 2014. I found, a I found a series of vulnerabilities in Yahoo, which paid me about $9,000 and allowed me at, the, at that age, at a young age, to buy that car. And that's one of the cars that I wanted to own at the time. I went to my uncle and asked him to help me buy a car. And he's like, how are you going to pay for it? And I was like, oh, here's a check. Like, I have the money for it. I just need you to help me buy it. Uh, his reaction was, are you selling drugs? That was the question he asked me. He said, are you selling drugs? And I said, no, I found this thing called bug bounties. Uh, you can you know, report to companies and uh, make money from it. And his second reaction was, please don't go to prison. I don't want to you know, bail you out. I was like, I promise you it's legit. Like, they're paying me through like wire. It's like they wired it to my bank account. Like, I can show you the bank statement. It's not just like, you know, dark web, like someone like giving me cash on the side. Um, and then eventually after I bought the car, I sat down in my living room and I was just like, okay, if I can buy a car within a few months of doing bug brownies, what else can I do? Uh, turns out a lot of things. I was able to finish school, uh, buy a car uh, throughout those few years, buy a house, travel a lot, uh, and pretty much build something around it. So the first thing I did uh, as a careerist was I got a job for the streaming platform Hulu. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar here. It's very big in the U.S. Uh, you can watch TV on there and watch some TV shows. And then I was very unhappy with HackerOne in my early days of uh, hacking. So I criticized the crap out of them. And they invited me to their office. And I criticized them a little bit more. And then I felt really, really bad. And uh, on my way home, I messaged the guys that invited me, the co-founders. I was like, hey, I'm really sorry about how I came out. But like could you guys hire me to help you guys with the changes that I requested? Like, I'm happy to, you know, not just complain and moan about the problems, but also be a part of the solution. Uh, and they hired me as an intern. And then I worked all the way to becoming the head of hacker education where I was able to teach people how to hack. And then now I've used that, I've leveraged a lot of that knowledge into becoming a VP at a startup out here uh, and becoming a VP and an executive. And, uh, that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to do more, so I got into public speaking. Uh, I realized I had a platform where I have what it takes to be on a stage and talk to people. So I started going to a lot of conferences. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are some of the bigger ones. OWASP is a really big one. Um, they have a number of conferences around the world. Uh, 44 Con, Shell Con, B sides. Uh, B sides Portland specifically is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Red Team Village and the bottom one, which is one of the biggest ones, is uh, the DEF CON conference that happens for hackers every year. 
um, in Vegas. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was a really big moment to get accepted to talk at one of the largest hacking conferences in the world. I actually helped the Red Team Builders now organize their stuff. Um, but that wasn't enough. I wanted to do more. Uh, I ended up creating content. So I have a YouTube channel, I have a Twitch channel. When I uh, do interviews, I started creating content. I wanted to help people how to get into bug bounties, how to get into hacking, how to get a job. How can I mentor people and not just use my following for just memes and talking about what I do? So this was one of the ways that I figured it would be helpful to do it. But then uh, COVID-19 happened and it put everything on pause. Uh, I couldn't go to any conferences anymore. Uh, a lot of the live hacking events were stopped. There was not much I could do at the point. So why not bring conferences online? So we organized a bunch of conferences. So I couldn't go to a conference, but because I had the following for it and I had the crowd that was interested in conferences, I started ho hosting my own. When I showed you guys the $52,000 that was raised, that was the first ever virtual conference I hosted. It was called VersaCon. Um, we partnered with a lot of big organizations like Amazon, Google, HackerOne, uh, Synac, BugCrowd, you name it. We brought all these platforms together and every penny that was donated as a sponsorship, we gave it out to the uh, LLS Foundation as a charity donation. And then NahamCon is the conference that I put together under my brand. It happens every year, it happens twice a year now, once in Europe, once in the US. Uh, very, very focused on offensive security. But the whole point was, if I can go to conferences, I'm gonna bring conferences to me. And the one with NahamCon has stuck around, and I think we're on the fourth year this year of hosting the fourth ever uh, NahamCon. Uh, what I was trying to say the whole time with describing everything I've done was to show you that 100% of my career, and some of the people that I talked about, um, they would tell you the same thing, that 100% of their career was uh, doable because of bug bounties and because of hacking. Personally, from someone who didn't like school, didn't know what they were going to do after graduating college, uh, I had no clue what I wanted to do. And if it wasn't for bug bounties, I probably wouldn't be on this stage talking to you guys. I wouldn't have done any of the things that I mentioned in the previous slides. And it's not too late for you guys to do the same thing. So if you're interested in bug bounties, if you're interested in hacking, I promise you it's not too late. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what your background is. There's always room to do it, and there's always time to do it as well. So um, if your route is to go get a degree, go for it. If college is for you, go to college for cybersecurity. Uh, if you want to get into red teaming, take courses online. Uh, OSCP or other security degrees are a way to do it. It doesn't matter what it is, it's honestly doable and people are doing it every day. But in case you want to get into bug bounty specifically and find web vulnerabilities, these are the two books that I mentioned earlier. I highly recommend reading the both of them. Um, it's a great way to learn from two people that have done it all, they understand the scene, that have done these things. Right, and the books are not that expensive. They're maybe $30, $40, and I'm pretty sure the eBooks are cheaper or actually free in some cases. Uh, there are a lot of learning platforms, and I'll talk about all of them. Hacker 101 is uh, Hacker One's bug bounty platforms uh, learning uh, platform. So if you go on Hacker One or Hacker 101, you can learn how to hack, and then they have these puzzles you solve. And every time you solve a puzzle, you get a certain amount, number of points. And every time you hit 33 points, they invite you to a private bug bounty program. So it's a shortcut into your career as a bug bounty hunter to get involved. Uh, WebSec Academy is a really good place to learn. Um, also free. Uh, the other three, Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, and Pentester Lab, aren't free. Some of them are freemiums to have some free rooms, but honestly, 10, 12 bucks a month isn't a whole lot given the return of investment you're going to get if you do get a job when you find your first bug bounty. Uh, it pays for itself. But the other two that I mentioned, Hacker 101 and WebSec Academy, are both free. And if you're trying to get into it, honestly, it's a really, really good start to jump in and learn. There's also Twitter and YouTube. Uh, go on YouTube, type in how to, whatever you're trying to learn, how to get into red teaming, how to get into bug bounty, how to do XSS, all these different volume types. Uh, YouTube is a really, really good place to get started. And honestly, Twitter is amazing. If you're not on Twitter, I highly recommend getting on Twitter and following some of the hackers that I put up on the stage and just asking them questions. A lot of times, if you ask them the question the right way, a specific question, hey, I want to learn X, what do you recommend? Uh, they will be very, very happy to help you out. And if you need even more resources, if you Google bug bounty resources, uh, just type in bug bounty resources, the first page that comes up is this. It's a GitHub page that I put together. It should be the number one search result on there. And this talks about everything you need to know, whether you want to get into IoT hacking for devices, whether it's web, mobile, the basics. Uh, there's labs for it, there's articles, there's YouTube videos. Uh, it gets regularly updated. Uh, it's crowdsourced in a lot of ways. 
but it's also a really, really good place to look and get started. Other than that, just get to hacking. Uh, go to a, one of these bug bounty platforms, find a target. Uh, if you learn the basics, get your hands dirty. Um, the Department of Defense is on Hacker One. You can hack them, you get bragging rights, and honestly, they're being a government entity, they're one of the easiest targets to hack and learn on. And if you need more, uh, you're always welcome to reach out to me. I go by Nahamsek on almost every social media platform except Snapchat. I refuse to go on there. And you can also email me at hello at nahamsek.com.